right so what I want to do in this video is give you a somewhat of, of an idea as far as the the main openings I play all right so we are gonna move on our plan as far as improvement but I felt that when I covered some of the games I did I didn't really give you a full understanding of the basic ideas about my opening and that's the cool thing about the openings that I like to play is that it's a battle of ideas it's not a battle of memorizing moves it's literally a battle of ideas and it's it's really great where you actually have a plan um, versus actually memorizing moves now with white or black I pretty much have three main openings and all three of them have the same pawn structure so the pawn structure is very similar to in all three of them. And the cool thing about having an opening that have similar pawn structure, there's several good reasons for having an open have um, good pawn structures. I mean, similar pawn structure is for one, it gives you an easy plan when it comes to the end game. Because a lot of times the openings I tend to play, uh, my opponents don't really encounter them too often. So... I have played hundreds, not even hundreds, I played thousands of the same exact games um, with the same exact pawn structure. Um, however, they only encounter that particular opening a handful of time, and they only have a basic idea as far as what to do in that pawn structure. While in my case scenario, I actually have a plan. I've seen this so many different times. And remember, by the time you get to the end game, you usually don't have that much time. So you can actually use your time much more efficiently um, compared to your opponents because you have seen this position so many times, you have seen this pawn structure so many times, so you have various plans of, 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 of what you're going to do. And um, some of the weakness that you know they can you can attack them on, some of your weakness, so you can actually counteract before they even counteract you um, and make some of the best move words like they, they didn't know um, that they could have made that move, or by the time they realize it, it's too late. You already saw, you foreseen it many, many moves ago. All right, cool. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to clear the board, and we're going to show it from black perspective first. All right, so here's how the pawn structure should look as far as for the black line. So. This pawn is here, that pawn is there, that pawn is there. So you can have a pawn up here, this pawn is here, this pawn is there, and then pawn, pawn, right? So that's how the pawn structure looks for black. And as far as the pieces go, you're going to have your knight here, you can have a knight here, um, your bishop is here, this bishop is in the home square, and your king is also usually uncastled. You have your queen. You have your rook, and yeah, so that's about it as far as that goes. And also, typically, what you want to do is you also normally want to have this pawn up as well. So that's that's how the pawn structure look as far as the black line goes. Right? This is this is your ideal setup. Now, if you notice, I didn't move the queen because there are. A lot of times, to be honest, the, the true idea of position black line that most people think of is they'll make to the, put the queen over here. And this is where I used to put the queen in the past. Well, in fact, most of the time when I'm playing black line, this is where I have my queen as well. But there are a few cases where you normally want to keep your queen here. So you want to keep your queen here and not waste that tempo of moving your queen here. Because once your queen is in this spot, it's not that easy to get into the game. Um, you is it's it's a little bit trickier to get there. Um, your queen is pretty much going to stay here as kind of like a bodyguard on your queen side, and the only pieces that's really going to be attacking is going to be your rook, um, and your knights and your bishop. Maybe you can get this rook into there, but for the most part, this queen is literally main job is to keep order on the queen side. Because a lot of players, when they play against a black line, they will just mainly attack you on the queen side. And by keeping your queen on the queen side, it gives them a target to go after. So here they are trying to like harass your queen, doing a whole bunch of pawn moves. Literally, you know, this this you know that they're going after the goal. Their goal is trying to get your queen or maybe get this rook as well. 
but your goal is to actually get their king. So usually they be castle here. So it's 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 usually a good um, it's a good lure. I would say it's, it's it kind of lured them in, and you you may find a way to get your queen in the game. But to be honest, it's not going to be that easy. Your queen is pretty much passive whenever you play black. If you play the black line correctly. Now I have seen some people were able to get the queen, the queen and key queen into the game, but it's not that easy to actually get into the game. In fact, that's the reason why I prefer to do a queen trade when I'm doing playing the black line, or the is also known as the Philidor defense. The main reason why is that my queen is not really doing shit here anyway, and if I can trade my queen with your queen, then it's it, I'm happy because in the black line or the Philidor defense, my queen is not doing anything anyway, so. It's it's a good trade in my, my book. All right, so that's your idea setup. And there's multiple ways that white can play against you when they play when, when they when they encounter the black line. All right, so let me actually put the pawns in for them. I'm just gonna put all the pawns on the board. And uh, this is probably gonna be a little bit weird. Cause there's so many ways they can they what they can do um, when they, they play um, against the black line. Sorry what they can do. So let me actually put this here. Put the king is square. Okay. Alright, so normally it would be e4 here, so they'll always have that in there. And um they're always gonna use e thrust this pawn right here. Um they'll get their knight into the game. Um and Okay, and now this bishop, there's several ways, several places this bishop can be, right? So obviously they're going to be castle. So let's talk about them being, okay, so let's, it's kind of weird to show me them actually castle without me doing it, all right? So where they put this bishop is going to tell you what kind of player you, you're playing against. If they put their bishop over here, then that's kind of like a... That usually tell me I'm playing against a pussy. <laughs> um, there's two indications I know I'm playing against a pussy. I know I'm playing against a big ass pussy whenever the person avoid the queen trades. I love those type of players, right? Because that means I can find tactics to try to get the queen trade. So I got them more things to worry about. And another another uh, move that indicate that I'm playing against a pussy is when they move their bishop here. Now, this move is not really that bad. It's not, not bad at all. Um, however, you have, to, you have to be very cautious when you have a player that put their bishop here on e2. The main reason why you have to be very cautious is that if you go too crazy and start attacking them, then they may find a way to trade off pieces. Right? So let's say, for example, they castle, and using a black line, you will thrust your pawns. Um, let's say they have a pawn up here, then what they can do here is they'll automatically retreat their back, um, knight back here, and let's say you try to do this, then they'll either move their knight here to try to trade your knights, so they want you to trade, and then um, they trade with you, and then you trade back, and then they trade here, or they take it with the pawn, I mean, it really depends, but you can't really, you have to be very cautious when you try to go and try to attack them on the king side whenever they play that passive move. Because when they play that passive move, then they it, they really put their pieces in such a way where they can just trade everything off, right? So they're really nervous. They don't want you to gain a, a major attack against them. So they probably may trade out all the pieces, right? So when you when you have opponents that, that plays the bishop to e2 um you have to be um pretty cautious with them um as far as how you go on with the attack against a, a player like that um so it's 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 really important how you go about that now if you have a player that actually put their bishop on c4 then you know you're playing against an aggressive player and this is probably the best square to actually put the bishop Whenever you're playing against the Philidor defense or the black line, um, it's it's a really aggressive um, position for the bishop, and um, it, it probably one that gives you you have to you have to 
Yeah, you have to be really cautious you're going to play like this, right? Because they, they're eyeing your weak square, which is on F7. So F7 is your your weak square. And you just, you just have to really um, be cautious about any kind of sack they may have there or um, different types of move that they can, they can do in, in that, that situation. So I would say this is probably the most aggressive uh, move that they can do is by moving their bishop here. Now, normally... They also would, um, they don't want you to trade off this bishop, so they'll normally um, move the pawn up either one square or two square. Two square is probably the most common um, line, so this way you can't get any knight moves to um, trade off that, that bishop. So that's probably the most aggressive um, way that someone can play against you um, when you play in the black line. Um, now there is other, other ways that the opponent can play from here. Um, another way they can play is they can try to finichito their black bishop on this diagonal. And when they do this, this is one you also have to be very cautious. In fact, as soon as I have an opponent put their bishop on this diagonal, my butthole clench up. So my butthole clench up and I'm like super alert. I'm like super alert. Like, no, no, you're not going to fuck me over this time. You're definitely not going to fuck me over this time. Because there's a lot of tricks um, once they um, they put their bishop on that diagonal. No. Um, if you have a player, so they're either going to when they do move like that. So when they move the bishop here, um, I mean when they move the pawn up here, they're either going to move the bishop here. So remember, once they move the bishop here, you yeah, I mean you have to clench up your butthole to make sure they don't fuck you over. Or they may move the bishop here. Now, they move the bishop here, and they tell me that they just want to trade off bishop. So they look into do a trade here, do a trade here, then trade bishop here, trade bishop, and you trade from there. Um, so it just let me know that typically that it's, that it's looking to make that trade. They want to trade off your, your bishop. Um, and I would say that's probably your... Is that our best bishop? Yeah, I guess it is. Well, where is my other bishop? I lost it, huh? When I was demoing the thing for you guys. And those are the various ideas that someone can play against you when you're playing the black line against them.